a voice you trust with inside information you need. This is Special Order with Louis Gohmert. I want to talk to you about the Marxist crime wave going on around this country. Uh, this is serious stuff. I had Glenn Grothman come up to me on the House floor just a while ago and say, you know, we're really close to losing this country. I said, we are, Glenn. We really are. This is a dangerous time. You know, some look and say, well, it seems like it's mainly the big cities run by Democrats. Well, it doesn't matter. When violence like that starts erupting nationwide, then we're in jeopardy. We're in danger. And the fact that maybe that it's hitting the big cities that are controlled by all Democrats and have been for many years, uh, that's not of much consequence if they end up taking the whole country. And if you look back, and, and look, I've studied history my whole life. I've loved it. I majored in it. I've never stopped reading and learning uh, history, find out new things all the time. But if you look back at the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, uh, there was a new government in place, and it wasn't doing very well. It was trying to get its feet on the ground. But the Marxists there thought if we can take advantage of things being kind of uneasy and maybe some violence breaking out here and there, we can take advantage of that and we can have a revolution and hit them while they're not very strong. But there was a military across the river there at St. Petersburg, and if they had come across, they could have crushed it, and that would have been the end of the Bolshevik Revolution. But Trotsky went across there, and as I understood it, he stood on a car, and he gave this incredible speech. And he encouraged the military not to go across the river and stop the insurrection. And ultimately, military joined in, and this little bitty uh, violent effort that the Bolsheviks were having uh, became the October Revolution. Uh, those things have been repeated throughout history, different places, and there is a Marxist playbook. And uh, they look for a trigger of something legitimate, which the horrendous death of George Floyd was, but then they hijack it and they turn it into violence all over the place and encourage people to want anarchy. What do you think? Defunding the police, you know, getting rid of the military, all those things, they create anarchy, pure and simple. And then they know they're organized. They would step in and immediately fill the void, put down the violence, take over. That's, that's where this all goes if it's not handled appropriately. And it breaks my heart here in Washington that we have people who are more interested in doing everything they can to keep Donald Trump from being reelected that they think, gee, if, if there's violence still going on, if we can keep stoking and encouraging, you know, not put that down, let these protesters just do their thing, then uh, maybe the economy, if we can keep that from reopening fully so people are out of work, then people won't reelect Donald Trump. For heaven's sake, this country's at risk. Let's come together. And it was really nauseating to sit on the House floor and listen to Democrat leaders talk about how they did reach across the aisle, garbage. We wanted to help them fix the problems that uh, created the George Floyd situation. But you've got uh, police unions, and sometimes they, they defend police officers that are good officers, maybe whistleblowers. But invariably, when they're bad cops— that ought to be thrown out, fired, all the other good police. They know who they are. They don't want to work with them. The unions come in, defend them, and they end up staying on the force and causing problems. Um, one of the things in the Democrats' bill, of course, was to eliminate the immunity that law officers have. Uh, you know, it, they're immune from being sued unless they break the law. You know, they violate civil rights or break the law. That's one thing. But otherwise, they're immune from lawsuit. And I was, I was as well when I was a felony judge. Otherwise, everybody I ever sent to prison would have filed a lawsuit. Some did. They were thrown out. But the unions 
would be okay with um, immunity. Some of them. Some of them have come out and said, do not do this. It'll hurt our members. Thank you, unions, for doing that. But there are others that say, hey, it's kind of like the teacher situation. If they can be sued, we can make hundreds of millions of dollars having them buy our liability insurance. So that's going on. And there is an organized group that want to tear this country down. How do we know? Because we got an article, uh, and there are lots of them on the subject. BLM leader, if this country doesn't give us what we want, we will burn down this system. Well, this is the best, fairest system. We need to constantly work to get it fairer and fairer. As my friend Ron Maxwell, movie maker, says, our history is one of liberation. You know, we we finally got rid of that atrocious thing called slavery, and and we have continued to get better and better. And now we have we are getting closer and closer to eliminating racism and moving together as one. And they want to burn it down. Uh, that's right out of the Marxist playbook. How do you stop it? Well. Um, this is a copy. I, I like to blow things up, and but it's the uh, 18 U.S. Code, Chapter 96, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Now, we had seen Project Veritas had video, had audio of Democrat leaders saying, you know, we funded the violence back during the Trump campaign in 2016. We paid people to go up and start trouble, start fights, and that way we could turn around and say, look at the Trump campaign. They're violent. We don't need a president that stokes that kind of violence when the Democrats are the ones that stirred it up. And that was going on across state lines. That was They were funding it from across state lines. Uh, and I went up to Jeff Sessions in January of 2017, and I said, Jeff, there's a way to deal with this organized effort to create violence in different places in the country, and it's called RICO, Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act. He said it was a good idea. I don't know why, but they never did anything about it. And we need the Justice Department to go ahead. This gives you the teeth to go after it. And the first thing it says is, uh, basically, it's a crime. Um, to and it, it you got to prove a pattern of racketeering activity then you look at the definitions that's in US code 1961 um, and racketeering activity you got two long pages of racketeering activity but one of those indicates that um, 18 USC 2332b uh, acts of terrorism transcending national boundaries. And if you know, these Antifa, BLM, uh, they, I mean, how can BLM be white people, bourgeois, uh, spoiled brats going up to African American policemen, spitting at them, cussing them, tell, saying all these horrendous things? And they're saying that black lives matter when white bourgeois people are up there belittling and trying to um, really terrorize verbally these uh, policemen. They've, they've held their own very well. But that's what they're trying to do. But it's not about BLM. It's about creating chaos so that, as this one leader says, they can tear the system down. Another, Sean King, says they want to burn, get rid of stained glass, get rid of Jesus, because he's depicted as being white. Uh, I love the song uh, that was written many years ago. I love the James Taylor version. I know he's a Democrat, but he uh, is a beautiful song. You know, some children seem talking about Jesus. You know, white seem white, like seem black. You know, different Asians seem looking more Asian. It's a beautiful song, but. And it's okay for people, as long as you think about Jesus as, um, as I do, the Lord of the land. Um, but that's not BLM. And as Dostoevsky said, and Whitaker Chambers quoted him, socialism, the problem with socialism is not economic. The problem with socialism is atheism. How do you stop these people? Well, I'm telling you, here's the playbook. You follow the law, but you've got to have somebody. Christopher Ray's not going to do it. 
Uh, he's more interested. He's out there now saying he's cleaned up all the problems. No, he's covered up problems, but he hasn't dealt with them, and he hadn't properly punished people that were in the FBI. And so the problems are going to go on as long as Christopher Ray there, and I don't think the country's really safe from uh, abuses in the FBI until he's gone. So uh, Bill Barr needs somebody besides Christopher Ray. He is coming under attack. And as my chief of staff constantly tells me, you know you're over the target when you're picking up flack. And Bill Barr is over the target. And they realize it. And he, I think he can use RICO and go after these people, but he's got to have FBI that's working. So let's, it, I've told the president, but anyway, Ray needs to go. Let's get somebody in that's more interested in enforcing the law in America than simply trying to win back a reputation by covering up the wrongdoing in the past. So Bill Barr, I know he's taking a lot of criticism, and a lot of Americans think, well, gee, there may be something wrong because there's so much being said about Bill Barr being evil. They said the same thing about Donald Trump, the Russia hoax, Ukrainian hoax, you know, all these firing hoaxes. They're, they're saying anything they can to defeat Donald Trump. When that man, I mean, he, he used to support Democrats, and I'm wondering if that may not be one of the problems they have with him. It's like Clarence Thomas. Uh, I love that man. Um, he's brilliant. As he's pointed out, you know, they didn't want me to leave the plantation. You know, they, they, if a man thinks for himself, then you got to get rid of him if he's black. Well, that's, those lives matter absolutely matter and they shouldn't be told to shut up because they don't think like they're told to think by the democrats so we have law in place that will work to stop the marxist crime wave that is sweeping the nation and i couldn't believe one of the uh, liberal extremely liberal reporters earlier today was saying but in the heroes act it was only a hundred million dollars for law enforcement and and so that's not much it's only like three percent or something well he was a liberal and the point he doesn't understand is local law enforcement is funded by local law enforcement the feds provide some money for certain things and the state provides money for state funded law enforcement but under the 10th amendment that's that law enforcement is mainly reserved to the states and the people but how ironic they want us like liberals like that reporter they want us to fund more money while they're out there in protests and riots saying defund the police and defund the military get rid of both of them and then you want to complain because the feds aren't paying enough for local law enforcement and by the way i, I just want to finish by pointing out uh, i've tried cases in front of unfair arrogant judges before i went on the bench as a felony judge and i worked very hard to make sure i never treated people like that in my court but the kind of contempt capriciousness and disregard for fairness and following the rules that i've experienced in the judiciary committee we're talking about a committee daniel webster was on that committee i think he chaired that committee at one time and it is an embarrassment the failure to follow the rules so how ironic when they're letting their witnesses go over two three minutes and i'm pointing out by just tapping a little bit to to make the point the chairman should have gaveled them down like like he does all of us republicans boom and the democrats what was said Let's go get the law and get run this guy out of here. Oh, so you're okay with people tearing down statues, rioting, looting, burning, you know, minority communities down? But when somebody, a Republican on a committee, the Judiciary Committee, wants to push the chairman into following the rules fairly, then you want him arrested, taken out of here? Really? Good grief. If the Democrats keep the uh, House next year, 
we're in big trouble. And that's not about politics. It's about policy. I would welcome the Democrats working with us. Oh, they say well, they did. No, they didn't. And they wouldn't even allow me to, to amend the Emmett Till legislation that was part of the bill that they're bringing to the floor today. Because 10 years is not long enough for a maximum sentence for somebody involved in lynching. It, I would like to see the death penalty as part of it, but I even offered to take that out because Nadler, that's the only complaint he had about my amendment. It's barbarous, it's barbarous, the death penalty is barbarous. So I went, okay, I'd really like to do this as a tribute to Bobby Rush and especially that 14-year-old African-American back in 1955, Emmett Till, who was kidnapped, brutalized, and killed. And the Democrats are all about symbolism. Oh, well, let's say we pass something, a 10-year maximum sentence. I think it ought to be a maximum death penalty. But I offered to take the death penalty off, amend it, and they wouldn't even let me do that. They objected. So, so much for their symbolism. That's not going to save the country. What we need is people standing up, enforcing the law, and electing people who will enforce the law. That's not fake news at all. That's the real story.